Good morning. I'm reading from Mark chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, and it starts off with the subtitle, A Man with a Paralyzed Hand. Then Jesus went back to the synagogue, where there was a man who had a paralyzed hand. Some people were there who wanted to accuse Jesus of doing wrong, so they watched him closely to see whether he would cure the man on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man, Come up here to the front. Then he asked the people, What does our law allow us to do on the Sabbath? To help or to harm? To save someone's life or to destroy it? But they did not say a thing. Jesus was angry as he looked around at them, but at the same time he felt sorry for them because they were so stubborn and wrong. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it became well again. So the Pharisees left the synagogue and met at once with some members of Herod's party, and they made plans to kill Jesus. A crowd by the lake. Jesus and his disciples went away to Lake Galilee, and a large crowd followed him. They had come from Galilee, from Judea, from Jerusalem, from the territory of Edomia, from the territory on the west, on the east side of the Jordan, and from the region around the cities of Tyre and Sidon. All these people came to Jesus because they had heard of the things he was doing. The crowd was so large that Jesus told his disciples to get a boat ready for him so that the people would not crush him. He had healed many people and all the sick kept pushing their way to him in order to touch him. And whenever the people who had evil spirits in them saw him, they would fall down before him and scream, You are the Son of God! Jesus sternly ordered the evil spirits not to tell anyone who he was. Amen. A number of years ago when I was speaking... I uh, mentioned the posters that used to appear during World War II, which showed a picture of Dr. Goebbels and uh, Adolf Hitler listening at a keyhole, and the caption said, Careless talk costs lives. Someone may be listening. And... uh, You know, when we are ministering the word, let's be very conscious of the fact that sometimes there are people listening who are in actual fact enemies of the gospel. They don't like the gospel. A couple of years back, you may recall the Australian pastors who got into trouble because uh, they happened to, for whatever reason, speak against Islam in their meeting. And at that time, there were small groups of Muslims going around the churches, complete with notebooks, and noting down what the ministers said, particularly if they had heard that the uh, preachers in that particular church did not compromise but were prepared to stand and say that there was only one way to heaven, one way to salvation, one way to find forgiveness of sin, and that was through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that kind of thing, of course, is not considered nice and is not considered to be appropriate anymore. And indeed, I have already had perhaps a gentle warning, I'm not quite sure whether it was meant that way, when 
uh, a church leader said to me, we now have to be very careful what we say. We have to be very careful what we say. For somebody may be listening. Well, I hope they are, because Jesus knew that the Pharisees were in his meetings. <clears throat> he knew that they did not like what he was doing and preaching. He did not compromise. He continued to proclaim the word fearlessly and he calls on us to do the same. A leader of a church, again quite recently, said to me, got to be so careful we don't offend anybody. It's, it's so very important. The preaching of the gospel is in itself an offence to many. If I offend people by preaching the gospel, it is not me that is causing the offence. It is the word of God. And I cannot, and we must not, ever compromise. When a group of disciples said to the Lord Jesus, oh, look, this is too hard what you're saying, we're out of here. He did not run after them and say, hey guys, look, uh, maybe I was a bit too heavy here. Uh, perhaps I came down a bit hard. Yeah, I can see how you might be uh, upset by it. Well, look, why don't we get together and, and I'll, we'll work out some way how we can you know, sort this little problem out. What Jesus did was he turned to those that were still there and said, you guys leaving as well? And they said, no. Where else could we go? Who else has got the word of life? We cannot compromise. There may be Pharisees and Herodians out there but we cannot compromise the precious word of God. It may be, to some, a stumbling block or an offence. It may be some just sheer foolishness. But to those of us who believe, to those of us who believe, it is the word of life. And we cling to that word. For it is through the words of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we find the way to eternal life. We find the way that leads to the cross. And the cross of Jesus Christ, although it may be offensive to the world, is to us glorious. And we lift it high with pride and honour. For it was on that cross that our Saviour died. And it was through that cross that we may enter into heavenly places. Washed, precious washed blood, saver's blood, setting us free. The song says, Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. And we should be filled with rejoicing and gladness at the thought that our Saviour gave himself for us. And what do we do in return? ask him to forgive us. We repent. Repentance is a big problem. I often repented. Well, I thought I repented. But I didn't really. I had remorse. I got mixed up between repentance and remorse. I thought that to be sorry and to say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I've done it again, I thought that was repentance. But repentance is, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry and I won't do it again. And I need your help to help me not to do it again. Because in myself I do not have the strength to overcome sin. I need the blood of Jesus I need the infilling with the Holy Spirit to empower me and strengthen me. 
I need God in his entirety, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have you truly accepted Jesus? Shortly we'll be having communion. And you know, when we have communion, I always give that warning. Some people say, not here as far as I know, some people say, well, <laughs> why do you give all that? I mean, isn't it just a ceremony we do? Communion is one of the most precious and important things we do in the church. Because communion, when we draw that much closer to God and give thanks for his body given for us at Calvary, for his blood shed for us, and without the shedding of that blood there could be no remission of sin, in that service we are told by St. Paul that if we take it when we shouldn't, if we take it when we are not fit to take it, spiritually speaking, we risk sickness and death. I rarely actually mention that part of it when I do the service. Because many of us at one time or another have illnesses and those of a more imaginative mind might start to think that because they're ill, it's because they took it wrongly, the communion. But it's nothing to do with that. We are called to look into our own heart and examine ourselves. Is your heart right with Jesus to stay? Is my heart right with Jesus? Have we come to the cross already today? A distant relative of mine named Mary Kidder in the 1860s wrote a little hymn starting, Ere you left your room this morning, did you think to pray? Have we already prayed today? By his dying love and merit, have we claimed the Holy Spirit? Is my heart right with God? Dear people, I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's listening on the internet. Jesus is the only answer. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you cannot find salvation through anyone else. I don't care how great and how amazingly wonderful these false religions are. They are false religions that lead men, women and children to a lost eternity. I listened to a Jewish Christian evangelist and he was saying that he had been at this big conference of uh, Jewish people in the US of A and he shared with them the gospel that the man Jesus, Yeshua if you will, was the Messiah. And uh, after the meeting they had a big luncheon and one of the leaders of the Jewish group said to him, well brother I, I guess we'll just have to agree to uh, differ on this, won't we? And the evangelist in his testimony he said my first response was to say smile and say well I guess we'll have to won't we but he said no I can't do that I, I, I can't agree to differ I will set myself like rock like granite like flint against anything that takes away from the glory of my saviour Jesus Christ I will not compromise. I will not agree to differ. I will stand for the gospel. I will refuse to compromise the word of God. 
Jesus is the answer for the world today. Trust him. There is no other. He's the truth, the light, the way. Let us give thanks from our heart for Jesus. And let them conspire against us if they will. The victory is ours. Jesus is Lord. Amen.